to God in a word of prayer. Gracious and eternal God, Lord, we say thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for this day, God. We thank you, Lord, for this Sunday, God, how you have been ministering to us and speaking to us, God, throughout this service, God. We thank you, Lord, for, uh, for just the ways in which, God, uh, our young folk, God, our YPD, God, has blessed us, has led us in worship, God. We thank you, God, for the many ways in which, God, we are reminded, Lord, uh, that we still, God, have to reach back and be a blessing to others, God, that we still have to reach back, God, and nurture, God, the generation, God, that is coming behind us. God, we thank you, Lord, that uh, that, we're not, that we're not gonna let anything turn us around, God. We're not gonna let segregation, oppression, God, white supremacy, God, anything that is not like you, God, turn us around, God. We thank you, Lord, for uh, for the faith, God. We thank you, Lord, for our faith, God, that conquers fear, God. We we thank you, Lord, for uh, for hope that conquers over fear, God. We we thank you, Lord, for all. For, we thank you, God, for uh, for the that uh, giving us a spirit of fear, God, but of love, power, and a sound mind, God. We just thank you, God, for everything, God, we have heard and uh, that we have experienced, God, on this day. We ask, God, as the word prepares. I have to come forth so that you will open our hearts, minds, and spirit to receive the same Lord. God, I ask that you have me behind your cross. Speak to me and speak through me. Allow me to decrease in your Holy Spirit to increase. Have your way. We shall give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And together we said amen, amen, and amen. Amen, church. If you would, church, would you turn in your Bibles to uh, the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter one, Exodus chapter one, Exodus chapter one, uh, excuse me, Exodus chapter two, Exodus yeah. chapter two, Exodus chapter two. That should be easy to find. Genesis, Exodus, amen. Second book of the Bible, Exodus uh, chapter two, verses one through 10. Exodus two, verses one through 10. And again, we praise God for all those who have your African attire this morning. Y'all look good in your African attire, amen. Your head wraps and Y'all look real good. Uh, Exodus chapter two, verses one uh, through 10. And I'll be, I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And it reads, now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the meat, uh, placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what could happen, to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called me and I would, so the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. The word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. Church, with your prayers on this morning, I like to preach from the thought the African presence in the Bible, Thermuthis. The African presence in the Bible, Thermuthis. Currently across the world in Southeast Asia, in the Southeast Asian country of Myanmar, uh, formerly known as Burma, the military is now back in charge and has declared a year long state of emergency. The military seized control on February 1st by staging a coup following the general election in which the National League for Democracy Party won by landslide. The armed forces staged this coup because they believe that widespread fraud took place during this election. Although the election commission stated 
that there was no evidence to support these claims, the military coup took place as a new session of parliament was set to open. In response to this military takeover and its might, uh, the citizens of, of Myanmar have resorted to creative acts of civil disobedience to protest the army's February 1st takeover of the country's civilian government. In recent days, church, the people have engaged in acts of civil disobedience, such as staged car breakdowns, laying down on train tracks to slow rail traffic, emptying their bank accounts of cash from a military-owned bank, and plastering pictures of the military leader on sidewalks for pedestrians to walk over. As uh, to quote Mayo Wynn, a civil rights activist in their country, he says, people are trying everything they can think of. They want to show they will never accept this illegitimate military coup. Close quote. In fact, church, the persons who are resisting this coup have mobilized and organized themselves as a simple disobedience movement or CDM with their main demand being that the military return the elected government back to its power. And while I don't know the intimate details of Myanmar, uh, political history, I do believe that there's something to be said about justice seeking citizens who engage in civil disobedience against those in power. Uh, let's put our phones on mute, please. Our civil disobedience is the active, nonviolent refusal to accept the dictates of the government. It informs them that unjust actions will be opposed and the people will act illegally if pushed to do so. In my opinion, church, civil disobedient protests are one of the most radical forms of resistance because not only are protesters refusing to comply with local, state, and national governments, but they do so peacefully knowing that those who are in power are the ones who have the guns, who have the ammunition and military might on their side. From the 1928 women's suffrage movement in the United Kingdom to the 1930s fought march in India to the US civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s to the 1987 resistance to toxic mining in Estonia to the 1999 peasants revolt in France to the Arab Spring in the 2000s. Simple disobedience works best when ordinary men and women refuse to stand idly by and allow the injustices of their state of their local state and federal governments to go unchecked and unchallenged. Civil disobedience church is when people stand for what they believe in and work to create a more just and equitable world. Sister DKG, even as we engage our text on today, we see an act of civil disobedience on display in the person of Thermuthis, also known as Pharaoh's daughter. Being the last person highlighted in the month, in this month's African presence in the Bible series, Thermuthis Church was an African woman because she was an Egyptian woman. However, she wasn't an ordinary Egyptian woman. She was no ordinary African woman. She was the daughter of the Pharaoh or king of Egypt. Thus, if she was the daughter of the Pharaoh, that meant she was an Egyptian princess. Being a princess in the Egyptian empire meant that she had power on her side. She had influence. She had access. She had resources. She had wealth. She had knowledge. And with, and with royal status and position, we can imagine that she had enemies as, as well. Today, we're choosing to highlight the life and story of Pharaoh's daughter because of the way in which she chose to use her position and power as an Egyptian princess to provide some context for us. Thermuses is the daughter of the Pharaoh who ordered all the Hebrew boys to be thrown into the Nile River and be killed. She's an important figure in biblical history because one day while she was down by the river, she spotted a basket lying at the bank, in the, at the bank of the river. And in the basket was baby Moses. Having compassion for the child, the text says that Pharaoh's daughter saved his life and adopted Moses as her own son. 
Thus, when we talk about civil disobedience, this was an example of that because we can almost be sure that Thermusis knew what Pharaoh's edict was. She may not have been involved in all of her father's politics. She may not have been involved in all the day-to-day -day workings and going on and what took place in the empire of Egypt, but I'm pretty sure that it will, that it will be hard to ignore the news of innocent male babies being killed. An order so egregious had to have vexed her spirit, especially if she had any modicum of compassion in her. Anyone in church with a heart had to know that it was cruel and unusual punishment to kill innocent children. In a real sense, her father had ordered the genocide of Hebrew boys. Keeping this in mind, let me add this faith footnote. Pharaoh's edict for all of the Hebrew boys to be killed teaches us that everyone your color ain't your kind. Let me say it one more time. That everyone who looks like you ain't like you. Everyone wearing the same, everyone on the same team ain't wearing the same jersey. Everyone ain't your color, everyone your color church ain't your kind. As we learn all this month, the people that we're talking about are African people. They may be referred to as Hebrews, but these are African people. These are black people people and we know that and we know that the pharaoh is a black african because he's an egyptian church yet unlike today where people marginalize and oppress people based on skin color in this day and time oppression marginalization dehumanization and enslavement was based off of one's ethnic background not their skin color so yes they had the same complexion. Yes, they had the same hue. Yes, they had the same skin color. Yes, they were black and brown people, but they were from different countries and background. Same color, but different experiences. Same color, but different values. Same color, but worship different gods. And the reality is, church, even today, we know that there may be folk who look like us, but excuse my language, but they ain't down for us. Think about Clarence Thomas. He's a brother who looks like us, but he's definitely not for us. Dr. Ben Carson looks like us, but not for us. Stacey Dash looks like us, but not for us. Bill O'Neill, the one who betrayed uh, our brother Fred Hampton, same color, but different kind. And while we know that all Black people aren't monolithic, I have a problem, church, when Black people willingly embrace ideas, ideals, politics, practices, and stances that are anti-Black. Again, let me say it one more time. Everyone, your color ain't your kind. So here it is. While Pharaoh proved himself to be the same color as the Hebrew people, he was definitely not for them. But his daughter was. Pharaoh's daughter was a Black woman who had companion for Black people. She was a Black woman who had compassion on Moses, a Black boy. She was Moses' skin color and his kind. As Reverend Batty said uh, earlier during Sunday school, Black women have always stood up to the plate. Black women have always been there for our Black community. Black women have always came through for Black people. Look no further than, than the election in 2008. Look no further than the election in 2012. Look no further than the election in 2016. Look no further than last year's election, 2020. Black women always show up for black people, amen, somebody. So here it is again. Uh, uh, Moses is a Moses has the same skin color as Thermutus, as Pharaoh's daughter. Same color and same kind. And in the act of civil disobedience, Pharaoh's daughter ignored her father's edict and decided to save the life of baby, uh, baby Moses. Pharaoh's daughter decided to ignore her father's demand. She, she decided to ignore her father's order. She decided to ignore her father's politics and to save a boy named Moses, a Hebrew boy named Moses, who was not an Egyptian. Praise God for Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter church, and she decided to do what she decided not. She could have easily decided to do what the law said, but she decided to put people before politics. She decided to do what was right because when given the opportunity, we should always do what is right. This black woman church model for us 
what God would do because God is always on the side of the oppressed and disinherited. She made the decision to decide with God and with justice instead of Pharaoh and injustice. Making the decision to adopt Moses, she ignored cultural differences and raised Moses as her own child. Before Moses' church would ever save Israel from Pharaoh's oppression, Pharaoh's daughter had to first save Moses from her father's oppression. I praise God for Pharaoh's daughter, a woman who engaged in acts of civil disobedience. I praise God for Pharaoh's daughter, a black woman who decided to save this black boy. I praise God for other black women who go out of their way and work in our community to be a blessing uh, 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 to, uh, to save little black boys and black. I praise God for this black woman. The text says in verse six, when she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying. She took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. My brothers and my sisters, for the sake of time today, the only thing that I want to impress upon us is this. God hears our cries. They mentioned we put our phones and our tablets on mute. God hears our cries. Amen. Somebody put it in the chat. God hears our cries. Put it in the comments that God hears our cries. Pharaoh's daughter church heard the cry of Moses and God hears our cry. She could have easily chose to ignore the cries of Moses when she found out he was a Hebrew boy, but she had compassion on him. She had compassion on him because she understood that baby Moses was experiencing something that he could not fix and that was out of his control. As children of God, I believe that in the same way that when we're going through something in life, that God hears our cries. It may be something that we have no control over, like Moses, or it may be something that we brought upon ourselves that is now out of our control. But rest assured, St. John, that God hears our cries. It does not matter what you're going through, why you're going through it, how you're going through it. God hears our cries. God hears the cries of his people because what I believe about God theologically tells me that God is a God of compassion. God hears the cries of his people because I believe God to be a God of love. God hears the cries of his people because I believe that God cares about what we're going through. God hears our cries because I believe that our Lord, our King, our Almighty Elohim, Jehovah Jireh, whatever you call him, I believe that that God loves his people. Earlier, earlier, church, as I was speaking about various civil disobedient movements throughout history, the women's suffrage movement in the UK, the Salt March in India, the civil rights movement here in America, the resistance to toxic mining in Estonia, the Peasants Revolt in France, the Arab Spring. These are the cries of people. These are the outspoken cries of people in these countries. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. put it like this, riots are the voice of the unheard. Uh, the rich may not hear our cries, uh, politicians may not hear our cries. Republicans and Democrats may not hear our cries. Our, our parents may not hear our cries. Churches may not hear our cries. Pastors may not hear our cries. Our mother or our father may not hear our cries. Our spouse may not hear our cries. Governments may not hear our cries. But God hears our cries. God Almighty hears. I, I say it again, God hears our cry. Psalm 34, 17 says it like this. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. Pharaoh's daughters even teaches us, church, that God will use unlikely people to hear our cry. There's no way, church, that a Hebrew would have expected an Egyptian to help the Hebrew people, especially not the child of a king. Yet, 
God chose an un uh, this unlikely actor to be a blessing to his people. And while I don't describe, I do not ascribe to this idea of white saviors, the reality is this as a people, we could not have gotten to where we are today as a race if it were not for compassion, men and women of a different view than us. I praise God for white activists and allies who sided with justice, righteousness, decency, and God to be a blessing to Blacks. So I praise God for folk who decided to be anti-white, to be anti-racist, and to be a blessing to God's people and to Black folk. When it comes, church, to the plight of his people, God will move heaven and earth to minister to his people. God hears our Christ. Whatever you're praying for, whatever you're going through, God hears your cry. Uh, whatever you may be experiencing right now, whatever uh, may come your way, know that God hears your cry. Why, you may ask, because as Reverend Marsha told us this morning, God sees us. Somebody put it in the chat. God sees us. Quick story that I'm done. Years ago at night, a house caught on fire and a young boy was forced to flee uh, from the bottom floor to the roof. The father, uh, the father was able to get out the house and was bound outside. So here it is. Let me set the stage. Let me set the scene. Uh, there was a house fire years ago at night, and uh, the family was in the house. And the family, the, the boy, the, the boy's father, the father was able to get out the house and outside. However, the boy, the child, was not able to get outside the house. So here it is. The child is now on the roof of the house and the father's outside on the lawn. The boy is still on top of the roof of the house and the father's outside. The house is on fire. The father stood at, on the ground below with his outstretched arms calling to his son. Jump. I'll catch your son. Jump. I'll catch your son. He knew the boy had to jump to save his life. And all the boy could see, all the boy who was on the roof could see uh, was flame. All the boy could see was smoke. All the boy could see was blackness. The boy's vision was blurred. The boy's vision was blackened. All the boy could see was smoke, flames, and blackness. So as can be imagined, church, he was afraid to leave the roof. He was afraid to jump because he could not see his father. The father was saying to his son, Jump, son. I'll catch it. Son, jump. I'll catch it. And the boy was saying, Dad, I can't jump. Dad, I'm scared. Dad, I can't jump. Dad, why? Dad, I can't see you. Dad, Dad, I can't see you. Dad, I'm scared. And the father said, Son, jump. I'll catch you. The boy said, Dad, I can't see you. Jump, son. I'll catch you. Dad, I can't see you. Jump, son. I'll catch you. Dad, I can't see you. Jump, jump son. I'll catch you. Dad, I can't see you. The father replied, but I can see you, son. And that all that matters. Church, I'm done. I don't know what you're going through this morning, but you have to believe that God sees you. You have to believe that the Father sees you. I don't know what you're experiencing right now, but know that God sees you. And if God can see us, church, then we can jump. If God can see us, then God can handle it. If God can see us, then we have the faith to overcome all that we're going through. Why? Because God sees us. Not only does God see us, but God hears us when you're going through. God sees you and God hears you. When times get rough, God sees you and God hears you. When you're alone in your house at night, in a pandemic quarantine, know that God sees you and God hears you. In the midnight hour, God sees you and God hears you. When the doctor gives you a bad report, God sees you and God hears you. In the grocery store, when you forgot where you were going, God sees you and God hears you. Trying to work two and three jobs to make ends meet. God sees you and God hears you. Can anybody put in the chat that God sees you and that God hears me, that God sees me and that God hears me? Can you say amen if you believe that God sees you? Can you say amen if you believe that God hears you? Whenever, wherever you are, church, know that you know that you know that you know that God sees you and God hears you. Whatever you're doing, church, know that you know that you know that God sees you and God hears you. Whoever you are, know that you know that you know that God sees you and God hears you. 
Hallelujah, somebody. God sees us and God hears us. And because God sees us, because God hears us, he sees what we're going through and he hears our cries. God used this woman, Pharaoh's daughter, to model to us, despite what we're going through. Sometimes we're just like baby Moses, unable to help ourselves. And God is telling us that I see you and I hear you. I see what you're going through. I see how hard it is. I see how hard you're working. I hear what they're saying about you. I hear your midnight cries. I hear all that you're going through. And God is saying, I got you. God is saying, I got you. God is saying, I got you. And I will take care of you. Hallelujah. 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 Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we say thank you, God. We, we thank you, God, for using Thermethis, God, using Pharaoh's daughter to minister to us concerning, God, what we're going through. Just like baby Moses, God, who was in this basket all by himself, with his, with his life being threatened as a child. Black boys under, under siege. Black boys with hits of targets on their back. Baby Moses was crying out. And you used Pharaoh's daughter to see him and to hear him. And God, we understand, God, that just like baby Moses, that you see us and you hear us, that you know what we're going through, that you understand our pain, that you, that you know all about our troubles. That you, that you hear our midnight cries, that you, you hear us when we cry out to you. God, you know every hair on our heads, Lord. You know, God, when we pace the floor, God, night and day. God, you know, God, when we're on our knees, God. We, you know, God, when we, when we have our doubts, God. You know, God, when we're, when we're sick and we're struggling, God. You know, God, when, when a loved one dies, God, and we, we don't understand and we have no words. God, you know, God, all oh, that we're going through. And because you know, God, because you see us and you hear us, we say thank you, God. 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 Thank you, Lord, for being the kind of God who does not ignore the cries of your people. Thank you for being the kind of God that sees your people. Thank you for being the kind of God that not only just sees us and hears us, but springs into action to have compassion for us, to, to provide for us, to heal us, uh, to, to open doors for us, to make ways for us. Thank you for being that kind of God. Thank you for using people who we may not expect to be a blessing to us. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> for doing things, God, <clears throat> maybe not in our own time, but God, in your perfect time. God, we say, thank you, God. Now, God, we also ask God that you impress upon us to be like Pharaoh's daughter, that when we see other folk crying out, that when we see other folk who are in our struggle and distress, that we will be the kind of men and women of God who will lend a helping hand, who will, who will help our brother and our sister, who will, who will reach out to them, for who will be the agents change agents of God here in the earth. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. This in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Perhaps you're watching on today, perhaps you're watching this morning and you felt like that, you felt as if God doesn't see you. You felt as if God doesn't hear you. You, you have felt as if you have been in this struggle all by yourself. Let me tell you that God sees you and that God hears you. And perhaps you, you don't have a relationship with this God that I'm talking about. Well, I wanna invite you to accept his son, Jesus Christ, 
as your Lord and your Savior. It is through Jesus Christ. It is through Jesus Christ. We are connected to God. It is through Jesus Christ that, that all that I'm talking about, this compassion and this care and this love, it is through Jesus Christ. It is through him that all of these things are afforded to us. Amen, somebody. It's, it's, like, it's like when I come into my house, when I come to my door, when I come to my door, when I get out the car and come to my the door of my house, I can I cannot get inside my house without a key. I cannot get inside my house without a key. Some of us, we have fancy doors. We have what's called smart locks where you cannot get inside your house without a, a passcode, without some kind of key to get inside the door. In the same way, church, we cannot have access to the love, to, to the blessing, to the protection, to, to the eternal life that we, de that we desire, that we want without that key, without that passcode. And Jesus Christ is that key. Jesus Christ is that passcode. Jesus Christ is that Mr. Link. And so again, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you do not know Jesus Christ for yourself, we offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you. All you have to do is say yes. All you have to do is say yes to Christ, say yes to Jesus. So again, as we've said before, put it in the chat. Let's put it in the chat. Yes to Jesus. Let's say yes to Jesus. I put the hand, the raise up hand emoji. Uh, we see we have people on Facebook in the chat. We have people here on Zoom in the chat. So again, if you want a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, say yes to Christ. Put the hand emoji up. I reach out to us I, in our inbox. Email us at connect at stjohnandme.org. Whatever you have to do, do not go another day living life the same. Do not go another day without Jesus Christ in your life. In the same way, if you need a new church home, you need a new church home. And you need a new church home. We here at St. John, as, as Master B. and Maya said earlier, we would love to be your new church family. We are a great church. We are a wonderful church. Amen, somebody. So again, say, put in the chat, yes to St. John. Yes to St. John. Put in the chat, I want to be a member of St. John. Put the hand emoji up, uh, signifying that you want to join this church. Email us at connect at St. John and me or inbox us uh, on Facebook, inbox us here, put it in the chat here on Zoom. Whatever you, have to, whatever you have to do, we are here to welcome you to the family of Christ and to the family of St. John. If you need to rededicate your life the same way, say, yes, I want to rededicate. Put your hand emoji up. Email us at connect at St. John and or inbox us, whatever you have to do. If you, need to, uh, if you need a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, if you need a church home, if you need to rededicate your life, reach out to us here at St. John. And we will welcome you to the family of God. We will welcome you into our church. We will help you to get your life back on track. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, Father God, we just come this afternoon knowing that you are the balm in Gilead. Lord, we come leaving this service um, fortified in knowing that you see us and that you hear us. And Lord, we just thank you for your ever presence in our lives. Lord, we, we know that if we look towards you and put our faith and our trust in you, that everything will be all right. And so as we leave this service this morning and go into our afternoon service and leave that service and on tomorrow, we know that we will be fortified with your power and your love, and Lord, that you will protect us and be ever present in our lives. So Lord, we just come this morning letting you know and declaring that we love you and that we need you and that we are confident that we will see your, your goodness to sustain us until we meet again. And so Lord, we just thank you and we honor you and we praise you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. <clears throat> thank you, Reverend Marsha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, as, we, as we close and prepare to dismiss on today, <clears throat> well, not on today, for, for this service, um, we want to celebrate. I just see in the chat, um, sometimes y'all, when, when I'm preaching or I'm working uh, the PowerPoint, I, I don't get a chance to see the chat until uh, the end of the service. But we praise God and honor God as I see on the chat, some, some great news that uh, the entire Lee family like to officially become members of St. John and me. They said, we have always been family at St. John. 
and the entire Leaf family would like to officially become members of St. John AME Church. And so we praise God, we honor God today, the Leaf family, and we say welcome officially to the St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church family. And so church, I'm gonna invite us to come off mute, amen. And, and just, well, before we do that, because I know we can get out of hand, amen. So let me get the benediction, and then we're gonna welcome the church family, amen. Amen. Receive this word of benediction. <clears throat> know that God sees us and know that God hears us. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest through the bow of each and every one of us, henceforth and forevermore. Together we said, Amen.